I'm going to say something here that is really important. And we say a lot of things that are important, obviously, but I really want to just note this. In the last two years, we have witnessed the complete weaponization of mainstream media and, and levels of deception and lies unparalleled, the complete abandonment of any journalistic standards, incredible deceptions that I, I, I'm just, it's unbelievable. I mean, take Bloomberg two days ago, ran a headline, Donald Trump admits he ripped off 6,000 people. And they put a fake tweet. It wasn't even a shot of a tweet. They were too lazy to even Photoshop it. And they're just like suing to Trump, knowing the federal courts have ruled they can just lie now. You can get a ruling, but you don't basically get any money. There's no unjust in, uh, enrichment. It's like, wow, that's their answer. They're going to go total fake news, then say we're fake news. And the communist Chinese... I keep going back to this. I've got hundreds of articles that are incredibly important. All these video clips, all this exciting stuff to cover. But I just, do you understand the communist Chinese are the biggest mass murderers in history by double? No one else even killed half of what they did, their own people. And they were in every newspaper, including this weekend, I was at a neighbor's house and they had the Austin American Statesman and there it was on the front. China tells U.S. to rein in hate. Again, this would be like a guy pulling up in a white creeper van playing ice cream truck music with kids hanging off meat hooks on the back and then telling you you shouldn't let your kids play with Nerf guns in the front yard. I mean, I mean, this is like Freddy Krueger on PCP showing up, the total evil censor of the web, saying your government better get its ass in line and shut down Infowars.com and MattDrudge.com because that's, that's who they're listing. Now, Trump just wants us to have lower taxes and better trade deals. He knows, I, I knew this before he even announced it, that as you could tell, we're synced, that he would end up being at his Trump Tower half the time just to, just to shake up the whole deal and put the globalist off balance. The guy has just instincts that are unbelievable. And the left thinks, oh, he suckered right-wingers, he's really a liberal. Well, he's a liberal in that he's socially tolerant, but the guy is Americana. And this isn't some butt-kissing contest over Trump, but the Lord works in mysterious ways. They are in full crisis mode right now. And again, he's given four speeches in the last week on the world stage, the latest in Peru. He's given them in Germany, other areas, Greece, you name it, saying, oh, Trump won because there's fake news. We need a strong media system, central government, to counter it. So he's got 60 days. What is it, 59 days, 60 days? How many days till the inauguration? And they are just pulling out all the stops. So here's the deal. We've had major victories, but we're far from, you know, out of this. It's like your baby gets into the, you know, third trimester. Doesn't mean you're not going to have a preemie. The baby could die. We're in the third trimester here, but Providence is moving. But the evil is also moving very, very quickly. But Le Pen is in the lead in France. The UK is pulling out of Brexit. Sure, they're blocking it. We knew they would. That only makes it that much clearer. Long term, we win. We fight, we win. We run away, we fail. Unelected central governments taking over your countries, shipping in all these foreigners, demonizing everybody, raising taxes, brainwashing children against their parents. It's not popular. We're promoting the classic human system of prosperity against a system of austerity and lies by a corrupt elite that don't even follow their own rules. We're 59 days out, folks. But all over the world, led by Russia, and Russia is a strong man thing. It's got mafias. It's got its own problems, systemic and cultural. I've studied it. But they're promoting Christianity, they're promoting family, they're promoting organic food. They're the, the, their top TV host that's best friends with Putin. I was told by the head of RT nine years ago, and I wasn't arrogant, so I didn't believe it. And then I was later told by other people, oh, you don't know RT, basically the directive is be like Alex Jones. Expose the dehumanization, expose it. The Russians actually got it. Solzhenitsyn met dozens of times before he died with Putin. 
and said you should launch a nationalism and a pro-family operation and break free of the communists and break free of the social engineers. Charles Nietzsche wrote a bunch of books, not just Gulag Archipelago that won the, won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And I've read several of the, of the uh, English translations. I'll be honest, I only read chapters because I, I can't, the damn things are super wordy. But uh, the point is that, and all the, you know, the footnoting and just all of it, I mean, it's some heady, heady stuff. He doesn't do that to be heady. He does it because that's the full context. This is an anti-human science, people. This is Satanism injected into real politics. This is the French Revolution versus our real revolution. You understand, they launched their counterfeit after. There's a counterfeit 1776. The devil always has a counterfeit. Now, for the rest of the hour, joining us is best-selling author, both of fiction and nonfiction, James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com, one of the top survivalist experts in the world, former Army intelligence. He's a humble guy, but a lot of big wigs. I haven't been having him on for over a decade. You'll say, oh, that's a really great guy. He knows what he's talking about. And uh, look, look, we've had a major reprieve, obviously. I want him to speak to this. He was on right before the election. How are they going to counter strike? Where does he see us right now? Um, what does he make of the open calls to end our free speech? China openly intercessing itself domestically and our media just reporting it like it's no big deal. Democratic strategist was on Tucker, Car uh, Tucker Carlson's show Friday. And she said, oh, we need to do like China. We need to shut Alex Jones down. China knows what to do. They, they deserve good news. See, they want good news, happy news. So we're going to go over all this. I don't do pre-interviews with Rawls. We'll see what he wants to get into, but there's so much here to cover. Where do you want to start? Well, Alex, um, I think it's important that we look at current events in the context of the, the grand strategy that the globalists have been attempting for many, many years. And they came very close to reaching their goal with the attempted coronation of Hillary Clinton. And that goal was, was, was thwarted. But their basic uh, long-term strategy is still in place. And they're, I think they're going to do their very best to push the Trump administration into a position where they cannot put into play all of their uh, planned agenda for decreasing the size of government and increasing human liberty. They are still, put, the globalists are still pushing very, very hard. And they're at a juncture now where it, it's essentially going to reach a crisis point where they're, they're gonna be willing to either cause a third world war or cause a full scale economic collapse in order to make that happen. I agree with you. And if you look at this, the, their body language, which, which I'm actually don't like to see, their body language is they're not as arrogant as they used to be. They look deer in the headlights, truly shaken, their con game, their power trip, uh, absolutely decimated, and we all know the con artist is the person, you know, really believing their BS the most. You can't cheat an on honest man. You can't, you know, basically get him into a scam, but th these people actually buy into their own cosmology, and do you agree with me that if you, if you look at Obama and, and Hillary and the rest of them, they yeah, just, yes. they look completely freaked out. Well, Alex, I think that um, Clinton and her crowd have definitely been pushed off to the sidelines, but their handlers, the, the real power behind the throne, really are, are still committed to global governance. Global governance, they want a global, a one world currency, an electronic currency, and they want to subsume national sovereignty under uh, a true global sphere. And at this point, they really felt disappointed by not being able to corral the election the way they wanted. So I think they're going to they're going to basically double down. They're going to push things to the point where they can implement their agenda. And the only way that they can do that now is not through the political process. They're going to do it economically. 
and geopolitically uh, by fomenting a crisis. Sure. A, a crisis and, and, so big that it'll be on the scale of World War II. And that's what we saw the head of the army say recently, that a war is coming as big as World War II. I, I believe it is. Uh, you know, I think it's this is evidence that we're living in the age of deception and betrayal. And at this point, we cannot trust most of the people sitting in Congress. And I, we, I have a limited level of trust for the, the people sitting in the White House, but uh, we need to be prepared for some very traumatic times. And we need to be praying for the Trump administration, everyone on that transition team, all of his designees for uh, the key cabinet positions and all the advisors. Yeah, they all need providence now more than ever. Well, yeah, it, we need to be praying that, that they truly believe in limited government, in individual liberty, in constitutional law. And by that, I mean the original intent of the founding fathers. And if Trump surrounds himself with people like that, we have a chance. That's right. Let's come back and talk about reaching a crisis point. You bet. How the globalists are going to strike back, what you think Trump should do. Uh, because, look, it's not about vindictiveness. It's about justice. I think he goes on offense, and I think it's time to basically have the military arrest the globalist. I I'm serious, folks. I'm going to call for it when we come back. We're live from the Infowars.com studios in Austin, Texas. I'm your host, Alex Jones, best-selling author and former Army intelligence officer and really smart guy. James Wesley Rawls is our guest. This is a short segment. Again, we have a long segment coming up. Look, I know it's a military tactic and a historical tactic to demonize your enemy. And the enemies usually demonize you. So, you know, at least in the in, in the manifestation that they're involved in against you, uh, it appears to be quite demonic. But when I sit here and say the globalists are an evil ideology that really is anti-human, just look at what they do. And they're really nasty and they're really committed to what they're doing. And when I said earlier, it's really time if the grand juries won't act and if we don't get Senator Sessions confirmed, which is a big signal that Trump's going after him, we're never going to route all this. I mean, this isn't free speech. George Soros is a Nazi collaborator. By the way, we finally found, folks found, it's been gone for years. They took it off the web, his Nazi collaborator comments where he's proud of it and all the rest of it. We're going to play that coming up in the next segment. But what I'm getting at here is th these are true criminals trying to overthrow the country and take our free speech. They've committed all these crimes. They stole the election from Bernie Sanders. They're trying to create race wars. The more cops have been executed in the last 24 hours. Black men just shooting cops that are, you know, riding tickets or changing tires. Again, more race war garbage. It's like at some point, I, I've always said a military coup is very dangerous. Look, look what happens to third world countries. We already have a globalist coup. And so all I'm saying is I don't shoot my mouth off. I don't talk about things like this unless I really mean it. We're in peril. And I think maximum offense is the way to take these people down, not just sitting here and letting them continue to bleed this country. Now, I want to give Tr Trump time to get in. I, I want to see the grand juries go after folks. But, Mr. Rawls, what do you think? Well, Alex, I have to agree with you that the globalists are truly evil. And at this point, they are truly desperate. And... We, be, with the Trump election, we have forced them into a corner in that they only have a couple of possible solutions to salvage their agenda. And neither of those are very appealing, those, are, those being global war or global economic collapse. But we've got to recognize that they're willing to take those steps to see their agenda fulfilled. And that's what they're, I'm saying. That, that, and, and, and they're so arrogant, that, they admit that. So we have to go after them then. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, when they're that evil, that craven, we really do need to go on the offensive. I think it's important that people be fully engaged politically, that they do their very best to speak out when they see uh, this evil agenda. They need to do their best to support the Trump administration. And assuming that Trump does indeed surround himself with godly men and, and godly women in his cabinet, 
we need to give them our full support. But beyond that, I think it's important for us to have our own contingency plans that if, if the system is collapsed intentionally, we need to be positioned where we're well provisioned. To pick up the pieces. It's only, it's only the people who are not worried about their next meal uh, are, are out there. It's, it's only going to be in a situation like that. It's only going to be those people who are going to be able to speak up. Everyone else is just going to be worried about feeding their families. That's right. The enemy battle plan. Starving, starving to death or freezing to death. It's only the people who are well provisioned who are going to be in a, in a position to help uh, the political process to restore order if there's, if there's a, a crisis, if there's a collapse. So that makes it very, very important for people to be well prepared. And a lot of the products that you advertise there in your own store, I think, are good products for people to think about getting. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I personally am ready. I mean, I, and, I, and I wish this wasn't the case. We're about to go to break, but let me ask you this, and I, and I want to come back and talk about what you see long term, regardless. Sure. I mean, I'm, I mean, I see why. I mean, obviously, you agree that we're in a crisis. We've got to get more serious. I don't want to sit here and escalate things, but they're clearly digging in and moving against us, and they're just so criminal. They're not allowed to just openly plot the overthrow of the country and criminal activity. This is sedition. If I was talking like this, I should be arrested. Sure, certainly. The um, the the same level of preparedness that, that the New World Order crowd has taken should be what motivates us, because... They have their their deep underground bunkers in Lord knows where, whether it's New Zealand or wherever. We need to have our own countermeasures. We need to have our own security, our own our own steps. Let's talk about that, James. I'm gonna when we come back because I always ask the questions. I want you to go where you want to go with those wild cards. Talk about your latest book, and I want to talk about the the elite are running to their bunkers. That's in the news. So doesn't that signify that even before got uh, before Trump got elected? That, that, that they are uh, actually running up the white flag to a certain extent? It's Black Friday week, a chance to get amazing, one-of-a-kind, game-changing products that also support our fight against the New World Order at 360WIN. At InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free, 888 And again, thank you for funding the true tip of the spear and the fight for human liberty. We could not have done it without you, and I want to salute you for your support, your prayers, the action you've taken, every race, color, and creed. We are all red-blooded humans together, and I love you.